What's going on? Coach Luca back here with Vigor Ground Fitness and Performance, strategies, tips, all of that good stuff, right? So today we're here with Daniel, Danny boy. Everybody's got a name, subject A. So we're going we're gonna to go over the uh, kettlebell clean. Uh, the reason for it, I mean, here's the thing. It's kettlebell clean is a kettlebell clean. We're not really going to say, hey, you can do this with the dumbbell. Obviously, it's, it's, it's unique in how it's formed. But, um, you know, same thing. A lot of people have asked us about kettlebell drills. And, and as much as I don't think it's the only thing in the world that works, they are great, right? And, and the clean is an awesome exercise. It's, and it's somewhat different than, obviously, a barbell clean. Um, because in a barbell clean, we come under, under the clean. With a kettlebell clean, right, we stay nice and tight and firm and tall. <clears throat> You know, we're going to do it with Dan today because he actually knows how to do the clean, but the, the cool thing about it is he hasn't been doing it for, for a long time, so we can actually clean it up a little bit and work on form and demonstrate to you how it's done um, and the benefits of it. And I'll, I'll do a quick clean here, more so for the purposes of uh, that, to show you that, you know, the clean, the rack clean position is with kettlebells is something that, you know, we go to everything else from, and, right? So... When I clean it from this position, we're pressing. From this position, we can squat. From this position, we can do a lot of different. You know, we can lunge and so on, so forth. Right. So, um, it's it. You have to rack the kettlebells first to do squats, clean, so on. I mean, uh, presses and, and so forth. Right. So the clean in itself is an exercise, but also um, it's it's uh, setting up a lot of the positions that we're going to use. So. You know, we're going to start kind of like from the side and get Dan, let's, uh, let's get you set up facing that way. So we're going to go this way, all right? And kind of, you know, it, essentially the beginning position of the clean is somewhat similar in, like the swing. And with that said, you know, we'll teach, uh, and I'll kind of demonstrate this too, right? Even with the clean, I like to go out a lot of times and get people nice and tight here, right? Because you'll see a lot of shoulders just kind of cut, fall out right off the bat, right? So this will be their start position. So we'll tilt it and pull it a little bit. Because now, as soon as I pull it, my lats get tight, my abs get tight, right? Okay, so Dan's going to start the same way. Bring it out a little bit. There we go. All right, so he's going to like slide it and pull it a little bit so he gets tight. Good. All right, so he's in his hip hinge position. Right, so it's not a squat, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's not a deep squat, it's not an RDL, it's like right in between. Okay? So from, what we're going to do, we're going to do both variations. One is going to be this one where he's sliding it, one's going to be from a dead stop. So first time around, he'd throw it back like a swing and snap, the, snap up in this position, right? putting it back down. Now, from, from, uh, for a lot of people, like I said, if they don't have the hinge down, we usually teach the swing first, but we're actually, so step forward just like we did last time in a dead stop position, okay? Right, we'll go right from there and chest tall. Now, here's the good part, right? The good part, we're going to clean some, some things up. Dan's clean is actually not bad at all, um, but we're going to face the camera. I right, put it back down and like let's face the camera and just do another clean. I'm not going to coach you on it. Right, and back down. So, a couple of things. Things that we're going to start seeing here are these, right? The main part that has to be kind of kept in the top of the mind is that this is a hip exercise, right? What the hand does is it just guides the kettlebell into place, okay? And what you're going to see a lot of, uh, I'll actually just demonstrate it real quick, is where you get the cleans where it's muscled with the upper body, right? So, Dan did a little bit on the down part. We're going to talk about that. So, right, when I snap the hips, right, but I really pulled it with my upper body. And people that are not used to, like, driving force from their lower body, right, you'll see them do this, right? So, for instance, I'll be here and it's, right, I, I literally pulled it up with my upper body. Whereas it really should be a snap from my hips and just guiding it into place, right? Okay? Big, big, big difference, okay? So one of the ways to solve that is if you see somebody muscling the weight, is to give them a heavier bell so that they can't do that, right? You give them a 72-pound bell, 
80 pound bell and so forth, there's no way they're gonna muscle that up, right? So now you gotta teach them that hip snap, okay? Now, there's a couple of things that, let's, let's actually replace this for Dan, and now is a heavier kettlebell. This is a 72 pounder. All right, so same thing, you're gonna go from a dead stop. You're gonna get tight. And you can see, right, if he's trying to finish with that, coming back down. So he tried to muscle it a little bit at the end, right? So more, think more hip snap, so step a little bit. All right, you wanna kinda, when you're doing a dead stop, you want that handle to be in line with your, with your legs. You don't want it to be too far up front because you wanna be able to drive from the hips. All right, so he's gonna go back down. Better, much better, and putting it back down. All right, so it makes you, essentially it makes you have to snap the hips. Now, the things that we're going to see, right, and, and I should say that the two different analogies, uh, step for, to the side just for a second, right, the two different analogies that I like to have for the clean is, right, what, does, what do the hands do, right? Because when I snap my hips, right, what do they do? Well, a couple of things, right? What we don't want to do with the clean, and a big mistake you'll see is, right, is if I clean like a swing and I let the bell come out wide. So if I'm here and I let it come out, right, it's banging me up, it can pull me to the outside, hurt my elbow, right? So when people learn to do single arm swing and we're teaching right this, and then you try to clean, right? Now you're seeing this big curve that's gonna bang the kettlebell here. It might swing it to the outside, get the elbow in, make you collapse, right? So we want to think about a wall. Actually, Dan is perfect, so Dan's gonna stand right next to me. All right, this is, you can use the wall, right? Pavel would usually just step right in front of me and say clean again, and then you get scared to hit him, because obviously he's a ninja, right? So from that position now, I go even closer right there, right? So check this out, where, where do I have to go now, right? Right, I have to be close. I'm using the wall, I'm going straight up, right? And back down. So that's a good way, a good coaching technique, stand in front of the wall, you don't bang the wall. So we're still using the hips like we would in the swing, but the difference is we're driving up, right? So we're snapping the hips, elbow drives up, and then imagine like a, you're gonna slip a surgical glove, right? Remember how you slip a surgical glove through? All right, so we're snapping the hips, Elbow goes up, we shrug it a little bit, surgical glove, right? So that's one of the analogies that I like, okay? Because you're gonna snap, come up, slip the glove, right? And then what's gonna happen, because the kettlebell's flying, is gonna slip into place, okay? Because you don't want it to bang into place, right? The second one that I really like is the, kind of like the Bruce Lee analogy, right? When I start snapping the hips, when I come up, I'm gonna elbow punch. Now, it's not a real hard elbow, it's a quick elbow, right? So, elbow punch, and I slip it in. And it actually works better for me, but for different people, it's gonna work different ways, right? So, one analogy is, the kettlebell has a string on it, right, on the top. And essentially, when I snap, we're gonna follow that string up straight to the ceiling, and I'm gonna slip the surgical glove, right? The second one is, I'm gonna snap those hips, snap, Elbow punch, and it's a short one. Boom, punch. Now watch me do it and see how that's gonna relate in that elbow punch, right? So I'm gonna go from a dead stop, elbow punch, right? And I'm nice in the place, okay? Back down. So I'm gonna actually start a little bit further back from a dead stop, elbow punch, right? And that analogy really works well for me, okay? Like I said, there's a lot of different coaching cues. We're not gonna cover all of them, but that's a great way to think about it, okay? Now, a couple of things, right? We're gonna have Danny do a clean, again, from the front, because I wanna talk about a couple of things that we already mentioned, but they're gonna happen, right? So I'm gonna actually put my arm here, coach him kinda like we did, so he's gonna go straight up, snap, there we go. Now, you can see how the angle of the arm, right, the old way to teach it was to actually have it here. Now we're gonna start coming more to this position where the elbow is right underneath the wrist, right? So he's gonna actually work hard here. Number one, 
elbows right underneath the wrist, knuckles are straight up in the air, his core is working, you can see him working hard, right? His shoulder is, 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 is packed, he's not overly pushing it down, it's just there in place, and his core should be down, right? So his rib cage is down, he's squeezing his butt to protect his low back. And when I look at him from the side, he's got a nice straight line, right? You can put it down for a second, right? So the things that, right, th that's your position. Is elbow's gonna be under the wrist, knuckles are straight up. We don't want the wrist to collapse. Step to the side for a second. So you're gonna see this happening a lot of times. So this is a collapsed wrist, right? And it's hurting my wrist, it's also hurting my elbow. So, right, the, the thing about the clean is that I, can, I should actually be able to wiggle my fingers. I'm not trying to crush it, not, at least not before I press, right? So in that clean position, I can be open, right? But my joint positions are nice and aligned, right? I have, I have this joint centration. So everything is working, trust me. Right now, I'm feeling my lats, I'm feeling my abs, my butt's tight. I mean, I'm working, just you know, walking around here. And we'll do this drill where we'll just walk around in a clean position. It's, like I said, tough on the core, tough on the breathing, tough on everything, right? So we don't want to have a collapsed wrist in anything. It hurts the wrist, it changes the mechanics, usually collapses the shoulder, right? So we want to be nice and aligned, right? That's one big thing. You also don't want to lean back. This is why we squeeze the glutes, right? We squeeze the butt and get that, that little brace, that rib cage down in that position because you will see this also, right? That extension lean back position. Ooh, all right, it's great here, right? But we want to have everything work. We want good posture, butt's tight, ripping the floor apart. Okay, so remember that the things that are going to cause essentially these bad wrist positions are if we don't slip through and punch up, right? It's going to be if we have this big trajectory because if we're swinging it, then the bell is going to come around and smack us or put us out of place, right? So everything stays nice and tight, almost like, you know, when, when, when Danny's standing here, right, it's a bit of a box. Right, I'm also standing here. If somebody starts flaring out, boom, right, we're going to keep him here. So let's do another, another clean. All right, you can see he muscled that a little too much. So let's, let's get a little more hip snap. All right. All right, so drive. Remember, you're thinking essentially get that chest up a little bit, more glutes into it. All right, drive through the hips. Much better. See, you can see that. All right. And remember, we're going to come to this position, knuckles up a little bit. All right and putting it back down. Now, last but not least, but very, very, very important. What do we do on the way down? Okay, this is almost a step aside for just for a second then. All right, um, actually, you know what? Come in and let's do a couple of reps. Uh, so now we're gonna, do, we're gonna do a couple of reps of then not, uh, let's do a couple of just cleaning it. So you're gonna clean it, right? And then swing it back, put it back into place, right? We're just gonna do a couple of dead stops and then we'll do a couple connected, uh, connected cleans, right? Nice, not bad. Keep that elbow down. Put it back into place. Okay. Not bad. All right, so he didn't do, he didn't do a bad job with that. And what, one of the main things that you'll see is that people actually muscle it even more on the way down than they will on the way up. Right, because they're scared of letting go. Remember, we're catching with the hips. We're loading the hips up, right? So on the way down, right, right, on the way down, you'll see this, right? What did I just do? I was scared of letting it go and catching it with the hips, so I kind of, I, I used my upper body to lower it, not extending the elbow, right, which is going to strain the forearms, the bicep, right? It's, it's, the elbow doesn't like that whatsoever. So remember, we're loading the hips up. So when I'm in this position, I'm going to basically throw it back down, not aggressively, right, and not far out. So I'm still close. I'm going close, letting it drop, catching it with the hips, extending the elbow, right, and it's going to turn. So my, my elbow, think about it. I should, be, I should look like a witch on a broomstick. Woo! Right? So that, this is basically where I should be. And that elbow is going to turn in a little bit, and then I'm going to use those hips to snap back up again, right? So I'm going to give you the wrong way to do it and then correct it, right? So the wrong way, we're going to go like this, okay? I'm going to snap it up. Okay, that's good. Now I'm going to, right? I'm going to 
See that upper body working, okay? Now, we're going to do it the right way, okay, with me just letting it go back down and using those hips. Right? So that way you can see I'm just letting it go and then snapping back up, right? So it's a ballistic movement, right? Tension, relaxation, tension, relaxation, just like the swing, right? Tension, relaxation, tension, relaxation, right? So it's teaching us that, and you can see just from doing a couple of exercises, a couple of reps, I'm already out of breath, okay? So there's the setup part, right? The setup part in a sense of where we are with that bell, right? Starting here, if we're gonna go from a dead stop, right? Or in front, if we're gonna go into multiple swing cleans, right? Packing it, throwing it back, and then going straight into it to the next one. How do we keep it within that box, snapping the hips, guiding with those analogies of slipping it in into place, staying tight, that posture, and then getting it back down, okay? So let's, let's put it all together. Let's have Danny do like five, five good reps. So you're going to go from a dead stop, and then you're just going to go five in a row. Get that fist nice and tight. Let's go snapping it up. Nice. And let it go. Better. Nice. Less trajectory, so you want to keep it closer. Yep, there you go. want to keep it closer. Nice. Stay tight. And break. So you can see, that's a pretty heavy bell for him, right? And it started swinging out a little bit. At that top position, remember, it's like somebody's punching you. <laughs> right? I'm getting super tight. Relax. <laughs> right? That's the difference between a kettlebell clean and the barbell clean. Right? When we come up here, we're tall. We're not getting underneath it. Right? We're snapping, and then as soon as it, it hits, <laughs> we brace. The whole body gets nice and tight. It's great for training impact sports as well. But like I said, hey, I wanted to make sure that I work with Dan. We clean stuff up. There at the end, it was going out a little too far. Hey, we get them into the box. We clean it back up. Right? So use those analogies. Use those drills. Um, you know, work on it. Remember, hey, cleans, this is not something that you're going to just come in and go like, all right, I'm doing it today, and I'm just doing a lot of reps. Right? Three reps, four reps, five reps, singles, one, one. Really get it down. Right? And the thing is, like, make it crisp, make it perfect, really work on a great, great form, right, and then build up with the volume, right? And here's the thing is, some of that, is it boring? It is, but I really don't care, especially if you want to be great, okay? Because it's mo most important that you do it right versus doing it wrong or, like, not doing it very good and then building repetitions and banging up your elbows, your shoulders, your low back, and things like that, all right? So it's Danny Boy, Luca. And we're out. We'll be back with more tips from Big Ground Fitness and Performance.